Um, I'm going to do a little presentation on the 425, which is alignment, assignment, keys. Um, this presentation I do for my uh, youth association in, in Mexico, which I started about three years ago um, with the hopes of, of growing into a, a, a knowledge-based, um, more knowledge-based um, and, you know, networking type thing for coaches and players to, to get out of certain little towns and playing football. So I'm just trying to teach them what's the basic that I look for in a 425, um, what I teach my kids. When I do, when I'm a DC, uh, when I'm a DC for the International Bowl, or I'm DC for a school, uh, what I like to teach them, what to look for. Um, let's see, we can get this going. So, you know, the part one, this is a five part clinic. Maybe I can come back on later on and do it, you know, part two, three, four, five, as Coach Lesley, but this is part one. It's not very long. It's, um, it's kind of detailed. I got to jump all over screen. So if you have any questions, just tell me to stop and I'll slow down, talk kind of fast. So, um, what I like to do is just talk about the basics, the personnel that I look for in a 425, the alignment that I like to run, the assignment, keys and reads. Um, what I like about the keys and reads, um, it's based out of formation. So today we're just talking about two by two, 10 personnel, um, and hopefully down the road we can get back on, talk some more football. This is my uh, the background. It's kind of Spanish because I do this clinic in Spanish too on, on Thursday nights, but. Um, I played for Royals Tech and, and Tigres. I was a DC, starting start from the very bottom, coaching little kids, and I moved all the way up in these certain DC roles. Currently, I'm a Brophy Prep, the linebacker coach, but I was assistant DC last year. Uh, before that, I was a DBs coach, uh, USA football. I've been on, on the world championship team as a safeties coach, and I've been a DC for the U18, U19 teams as well. Um, and I was a DC and, and middle school head coach at Scottsdale Christian. Um, I have a bunch of certifications like you all do, but that's just for more of my, my Mexico crowd. So let's jump into it. Let's get into it. Why the four two five? Well, it helps cover against uh, offenses that are, are pass heavy and RPO, you know, RPO strong. Uh, I found that running this defense against teams that like to run the RPO, um, it, it shuts them down if you run in a certain way. Um, it takes away everything inside out. Uh, we, what my philosophy is squeeze the play from the inside out, make them get outside. Don't give them anything up the middle. Don't give them anything easy. Um, make them throw the difficult balls, make them do the difficult runs, make them do the difficult blocks, make them adjust to you, you can adjust to them. So um, that's why I like this, this four, two, five defense. And you can adjust it quickly. You can, you can go back to a, a three, three, five or four, three or five, two, depending on what you want to do, what the personnel you have, just bring a man in the box, you know, Take away, take away a man in the box, stand up an end, bring up a linebacker, um, you know, or start a three three five and bring that linebacker up and play a four two. It just depends how you want to run it. So um, it keeps the best athletes on the field. Um, it also keeps a three versus two to three versus three left or right in the box against the run. So just depending if it's a in this in this scenario, it's it's a ten personnel two by two set or a double slot set. Um, you have numbers on both sides against the run. You have both numbers against the, uh, the zone read. Um, so you're in good shape against the run, and you're also in good shape against the pass. It kind of evens out what we're doing. Um, you can teach many different coverages. You can – this, for example, is cover two. This is uh, a mixture of cover one and two. This is – we do cover six, which is cover four and cover two. Um, everything out of a high, out of a high umbrella look. Um, just a variety of coverages, easy to um, – easy to maintain, sorry guys, I'm looking at the chat. Um, easy to maintain, easy to do. Um, personnel types, what I look for in my in my DBs, I don't know how to get rid of this, there you go. Okay, what I look for in my DBs and my players on the field, um, my field players are my dudes, my field players are my athletes, they're longer, they're skinnier, they're faster, they cover more ground. For example, my field corner, he's faster, longer. You can play the pass better, cover more land. You should be able to, you should be able to play your best man defender in one-on-one -on -one, um, in case we lock him up. Um, on a boundary corner, he's shorter, he's more aggressive. He's able, he's able to use that sideline to your, his advantage, and he can force against the run. Um, so that's supposed to be run. Like I said, it translates from Spanish. Don't, 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 don't dig into much of the words. I'll translate it for you again. Um, Free safety is my field player as well. He's high, he's tall, he can cover the whole field with his speed. And he can play central field, center field. Uh, he can play that that one that cover one 
that cover three. He can roll to that three and cloud. He can do different types of things. He's got, he's got to be the dude that can get there, and he's got to be super fast and tall to get to the those deep passes. Uh, my strong safety. Um, he's a boundary player. He's physical. He's a he's, he can cover the run. He can cover the ground, but he can play the box as well. He's more like a, a linebacker. He's more like him and the nickel are very similar, except for the nickel, he can cover uh, a man versus man. Um, and then my, my will linebacker, he's my boundary player. He's also long, can, can follow the zone, capable of blitzing, crashing, carrying receivers. Um, he's who I like to like to stunt with. He's who I like to play games with the, uh, with the blitzes with and, and send him a lot. He's, he's, he's going to be a dude, but he's going to be more of a run stopper. Okay. My mic, my mic is middle of a field player, which is MOF is middle of the field, the middle formation depends on your defense. Um, if they're in the middle of the, middle of the field between the two hashes, he is the middle of the field player. If you're on a hash, we call him middle of formation because it depends how wide the two number one receivers are. We want to play him in the middle of the formation, not the middle of the field. So we just give him different man marks depending on where he's at. But he's the smart guy. He's physical. He can run from tackle to tackle, ability to read. The uncovered lineman, UCL is uncovered lineman and drop the zone. Um, my rush – my rush is the dude. My rush is the best player on the field. He can rush. He needs to surf on, on zones, plays away, uh, drop zone, and re-tackle. He, he reaches from the tackle lead to the QB midline and contains at the same time. He's got a bunch of jobs to do, and he's got to do them all. So he's got to be the smartest player. He's got to be the most athletic, athletic player. I'm thinking, like, uh, what's that kid's name from Ohio State number two? Um, J.J. Watt. We're thinking of those type of rush players that can, that can do all this and, and make those plays in the backfield as well as – surf and, and, and destroy those uh, zones and encounters and all that stuff that we need to do. Um, my nose, he's the one tech player. He's mean, physical, control the A-gap, be able to use uh, the stunt, have the best low get off and explode gaps. A three tech, it has to be able to read, pass rush, chase pullers. Not as big as the nose. And uh, the end, slower edge players, he's be able to uh, rush, but wrong arm pull reads. He's not really like the rush. He's, he's, he's athletic but he's got less of a job to do um, on his side. So this is just, you know, alignment assignment for the, for the, I don't know how you guys use it, but we use both in my defense. You know, we tell the line, we tell them to line up in um, fives right here, fives and ones, five ones and threes to the strength side. The linebackers, we have them either in fours or, or, or if it's easier for younger players, B gaps. It just depends on how old your kids are. Like I said, this presentation is for coaches that are coaching from seven year olds to 19 year olds. So we have them use both. Um, it just depends what kind of kids you have, what they can understand. Um, and, you know, when we do these all star games and we do these type of international bowls and stuff, you get some kids that are just dudes, but they don't know this type of, you know, four eye, two eyes, three eyes. So we give them some simple, you know, line up in the B, get your inside arm on the, on the guard, line up in the, line up in the C, get your inside arm on the tackle. So we just have to – just a way to explain it to help our players be better players overall in the field. Um, this is my zone drops. This is what I got from uh, Coach Thurman Moore. We don't call them hook to curl. We don't call them flat. We don't call them any type of, of keywords, you know, so we can change the, the zones on the field if it's a, an advanced defense. Um, our, our mics have area one, which is, you know, middle of the field, the middle formation. Our, our will and our nickel have area two, which is uh, hook to curl, not, not curl to hook. It's hook to curl, which is area two. Um, and our corners or our flat players have area three, depending on who their flat player is. But we don't call it flat. We call it area three. That way we can bark at each other on the field or I can bark at the linebacker and say, hey, change it to area two, area two. Drop area two. If we know what's coming or we have a good scout on that opposing team. Um, and it just the safety is just deep middle, deep outside, deep half. That's just basic stuff for our, our stuff. But we just call them by numbers. We do not call them by um, by by names. That just helps us out to change stuff. Also, we have landmarks. So, for example, our landmarks for the middle linebacker. He's middle of the formation, turning towards number three. Um, turning towards number three. Uh, which is number three receiver. Number two, the outside, the will and the nickel have a hook, hook curl, which is area two, but their landmark is the hash. They do not go outside the outside zone of the hash. So if they're on the left hash, if they don't wait to the right hash, that right hash is their landmark, and that's what they have to get to in the drop. 
it cannot go outside that because that leaves an uncovered zone in the middle. So that's Coach, a landmark for them. Quick yeah. question for you. Uh, how do you call the strength for your defense? Well, I'll get to that, but it's, it's, to, the, it's to the back. It's to the back, especially in two by two. We'll call it left and right. But we have different ways of calling it, just depending on the coverage. We'll call it left and right in basic uh, two by two defense. Three by one, we'll call it whiz and rip. We'll just call it different sides, but it's always to the back. So if we're in a two by two, it's to the back. If you're on the hash and it's an even set, we'll call it to the field. I don't know if that helps you at all. Um, so initial reads, initial reads, the corners, they're five by one outside shade. Uh, I threw number two to the tackle and they just, they, the, their job is to force and sink their safeties. Our safeties are 10 to 12 yards. We're on the hash. If the ball's in the middle of the field or we're two yards inside of the hash, if we're on the right hash, two yards outside, or if we're on the left hash, it's depending on hash the ball's on and our eyes are always to the tackle to the number two receiver which means that we have peripheral vision our eyes are looking at the outside knee of the tackle because when we, when we do some film here you'll see how the first motion or the movement from the tackle is his knee his knee's always addicted to play if he sets back with his right leg to pass if he reaches with his leg it's if, you know it's a reach block if he steps down with that right leg it's down block that's always going to tell you where to go it just makes it simpler for our kids not to look at the whole body but we're just reading the outside knee of the tackle, um, but he's also a peripheral vision. As soon as he sees that, that back step from the tackle or that high hat, his eyes are looking at two to see if the two's running the flat, and then he can do his job playing his cover two uh, thing. If, if it's a down block, he know he has alley, he's gonna make that back or right, which will cover, you'll see MBR on the screen, make the back or right, um, but we'll talk about that as well as we go down on this presentation. Uh, safeties, that's, that's what the safeties do. Um, just keep peripheral vision. They have to be able to read from me to two right away and see what's going on while taking their three-step read. Uh, Will and Mike, their heels are five yards from the ball, playing the side gap or apex in a roll, depending on the field and the wide receivers. They are reading the uncovered lineman. Um, uncovered lineman is typically the guy that has the one tech. That's the guard that's next to the one tech. That's their read. Or the Will and the Sam, I'm sorry, and the Mike just has his basic guard rules for the string side, which we'll look over here in a second as well. Um, Nichols playing apex between number two, reading the tackle, high hat or low hat, same thing, reading the knee, being able to, uh, if it's if it's a cover two, he needs to collide and carry to his to his landmark, which is his hash, all the way to 10, 12 yards, not giving up that, that zone between the linebacker and the safety. He needs to be able to uh, maintain that, and carry that guy up the field. For a certain amount of time if it's a um if it's a low hat or a knee comes down he's coming up filling the alley and he, he has help from the safety coming inside or outside making him making him right the rush is in a five tech in my defense you'll see when i put it up i would actually have the rush at four because i have the rush i have no idea how to answer these chats guys i'm sorry you guys are chatting so yeah the two by two um coach harden He's balanced, so he's apex between the tackle and the number two receiver. He's five by one. I'm sorry, he's five yards off the ball between the tackle and the number two. He's looking at the tackle, but he's reading number two as well. Um, they have to be athletes. As soon as he gets a hi-hat read, he needs to be able to run his hips and get to his landmark, finding the first receiver that's kind of running into his zone to collide and carry. Coach, question for you. Yep. Uh, so where are you putting your nickel in a balanced formation, two by two, ace, and H-back uh, sets, two or away from the back? He's to the back. He's a strength call. He's to the strength call, and we'll go that, over that in a second as well. He's to the strength call. The strength is to uh, the back. I'll go through that. I think that's the next screen here. Um, the five tech. Um, so my rush is in a four. My rush is reading. He's got to be a dude, so he's got he's to be able to read the down block. If the, the, the tackle's down block, he's going to make that play spill. I mean, the zone's coming his way. If, if if it's a pass set, he's just going to take uh, take the rush and and try to attack the quarterback. But he needs to be able to read because he needs to be able to spill, especially if if our backer is not in a position to get to that B gap. Um, our tackle is reading the outside leg of the guard for pull down high. That's pretty easy. So I'm gonna just pull up some huddle for you guys. So this is what I'm talking about, our, our rules. So I call my base, I call it Bobby. These are my run rules for that. Um, so my strength, the question that was my strength, my strength, when I divide the center down the middle, 
my strength is to the, to the back. It's always to the side of the back. So if we're in two by two, right, my strength is to the back. I have most of my players, as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six players to the left, only five to the right. But I have numbers on both sides. That means I have four versus three on this side, and I have three versus two on this side, uh, which takes away and helps on the run. Um, what we're reading first is the force, so going from left to right. Um, our corners have the force, but they're reading through number two. I apologize for having a two receiver on there. Reading through number two to the tackle. Uh, through number two to the tackle, you know, say basic cover two rules. That guy go jumps outside, he jumps him, safety picks up number one. Um, if it's if it's a down block, he knows he's coming up, taking the help in the force, everything goes inside of him, nothing gets his back. The safeties, they are in a from 10 to 12 yards from the ball on the hash, if the ball's in the middle of the field, they are they have a peripheral view of from number two to the tackle, number two to the tackle, and they're reading the outside knee of the of the of the tackle. So that guy steps backwards. We know we're going to three-step drop. We're getting our pass drops as fast as we can. They will play that deep ball. If he steps down, we know it's either uh, run two, and we're making this back or right, which means we're playing the alley, which is the alley between this is between the end and the number two receiver. We're playing this alley, this area of the ball, but we're going to correct this guy. So if this guy goes inside, we're going to be sure to go outside. If he goes outside, we're going to make sure to be inside. We're reading his his butt. Um, to help us with the run flow. So it goes from tackle to two. If it's a run, we're going to read the tail end of our linebacker to help him and make him right and correct the play. That makes me the back and right on the run. Um, on the linebackers, we're just reading the ends. We're reading the tackles, the outside knee. He's, he's getting helped by the safety. Uh, and this is what I was talking about my rush. I have my rush in a four because if it's a zone two, he can help spill that to the will and to the, in, into the strong safety. If it's, if it's just a straight pass play, he can take an outside rush and get to the quarterback. But if it's zone two, the will is kind of apexed as well, which he's in a bad spot. He has to get to this B gap, right? So he's in a kind of a bad spot to get to that gap. We're helping him by anything to run two, we're spilling to where all our help is. Okay. If it's if it's a pass, we just rush and we just drop zone. Like I said, our guys are have landmarks. So when they drop zone, and I'll show you here in a different clip here, their their landmark is the hash. His landmark is the hash. He is turning, running, looking to the middle of the field or formation to the side of number three, which is the tackle. Our our tackle, he's in a three technique with his inside arm down. He's reading the knee. Of, of the guard, guard pulls, he's chasing pull, which takes him to the ball. Guard high, high hats, he's, he's taking the outside shoulder, running through him, get to the quarterback. Our nickel, he's just reading, he's playing that gap, he's just causing a, a big pile because we got the B gap filled no matter what with our rush. Okay. The Mike's read is the strong side guard. Um, he's reading pull, he's just basic reads, base pull, high hat, low hat, reach. He's just playing the ball. This guy's got a harder job because we have him kind of apexed out a little bit. Um, but we have help with the B-gap. But he's reading the, the high-hat, low-hat of the uncovered lineman, which is the first UCL, which it says here. First uncovered lineman is, is this guy. So that's, that's his read. So we move in. For example, we move in the rush to the, to the, to the B-gap or a three technique. We're, we're slanting to the left. He's going to be reading the tackle. That's his first uncovered lineman. But in this set, we're evened out. He's reading, he's reading the guard. Um, this is this is my basic my basic landmark. This is my Bobby Gold. Um, like I said, this guy is spilling or he's flowing, just depending on what this guy does, what this read is here. Everybody's got a read, and I'll go over the read steps in a second with you guys and, and my coaches, uh, my coaches trainers, so you can see what we teach all coaches how to teach the read. Um, this is what we read. This is what if it's a if it's a pass, and this if it's a run. Okay, so that's that's run. This is pass. And as you see, they don't go outside the hash. They don't go outside the hash. They find first man inside, first man inside, and collide and carry. And the mic's just got a head and swivel for anything coming his way. And we can do all sorts of stuff. Like this is my this is my cover one or my cover twelve, which I call it. Which we have one on one side, cover two on the other side. Uh, we can man the nickel up here. And now the mic has middle of the field to hash, and the and the will keeps the same landmark. Nothing changes for them. This this defense is is 
really uh, plan for the, you know, we do these international bowls and we do these events or we have, we have six days to install or six practices to install our defense. We really want to make it as easy as possible for these kids to pick up certain keys and reads and everything um, as fast as they can, but also as fast as we can teach it. So we're prepared for these teams that have been practicing for three months. We want to make sure that we're all on the same page when we do this. Uh, but this is how we, we break it down. So my first two practices are, you know, this is what we teach, which 10 and 11. Uh, then we teach 10 and 11, which 12 and 22, and they'll review everything. And then um, we watch film and we adjust to what they're doing. But we want to make sure we get the base set in so we can be able to play fast and physical football um, as, as fast as we can. So that is um, our Bobby two, and I just have some other stuff here. Like that's that's my that's my cover one and cover two. So that's my cover twelve set. Um, same reads. He's in the box now, so he's helping out in the box. The will. So now we can tell the rush to go outside. Uh, the mic's got hook curled to to the, his landmark, which is the hash. Find the first man in. So he normally will have a first man in. So he's either got the ta the the tailback, we run the wheel, or if the tailback flares out, we teach um, we teach the end to go with him. So the end's going to take his three steps. He's going to surf, and he's going to read the tailback. Tailback flares out. We're going to go with him, and we have numbers against everything else. So uh, that's how we play our basic defense against 10, and then we just go to cover three, which is how we apex him out even more. But we'll get to that here in a second. Um, I can show you some film how we line up. So this is this year's International Bowl. As you see how we line up, how we teach the kids to line up. Uh, the ball, these are NFL hashes, so I apologize. You see the dash right here. This is the hash for, for high school and college. But um, as we see, the, our safeties are five by one. I is the number two inside, reading through two to the outside knee of the tackle. Can't see this dude, but he's looking through number two, the tackle. All our eyes are locked in at the outside uh knee of the tackle he's reading his lineman he should be reading his un uncovered guard which is the left guard on top here our safeties are reading through the, the butt of the linebacker to the tackle making sure if, if that's a pass set that we're able to get to the ball while taking our read steps and if it's a run we just fly downhill and make that back and right i think this is a pass in two verse two so he lined up late so our 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 set um, our strength right now is right, right, right. He lined up late. They did this because they were watching us. Um, they lined up late, so we just set it to the field. Our strength right now is to the field. As you see, our, our safeties are taking a re-step. Everybody's taking a re-step. We ran a little little uh, nut right here, nose under tackle, little stunt. And everybody's reading this guy's going to wall and collide to his hash. First man inside. The mic's got his mic's turned the wrong way. That's that's his fault. He's be turning left where the number three receiver is. We walling and carrying, and then we have a, a pick that went back for a pick six. Let's see if we got some more film here. Here's um, another international bull clip here. There's two by two. Um, we're bringing a stunt here, but as you see. Our same alignment, everything looks the same. We got five by one, five by one, or was that actually playing seven by one to get a little bit of depth on these fast receivers. Um, we're bringing an edge player out here for a blitz. So he's apex, so he can show the blitz, but he's not hes not gonna do the blitz, he can actually go. And then we have somebody to pick him up. But everything looks like we're in cover two. Our alignment's always gonna be the same, so it doesn't show that we're um, adjusting to them. They're, we're making them adjust to us. We help blow up that run. So I have another clip here. All my film from last year was gone, guys. We make space on huddle. You know, they did that new huddle crap where they took all the space away. So, um, just three by one. Back in that one. You know, two by two set. As you see how we're, as you see how we're aligned. Okay, he's apex. He should be a little bit more apex to the right. Um, 
he should be apex between the tackle and number two. Our strength call here is, is to the field, of course. We're going left, left, left. Um, and our safeties are aligned, reading through the tackle to the number two receiver, reading through the tackle to the, to the number two receiver. Our outside back is reading the outside leg of, of the tackle. So as you saw the tackle going away, he should be coming straight down the line, making the play. If you watch the safety on this play, our safety is reading. Now he sees run. This linebacker's coming up alley. He's going to make the backer right. He's reading the tail end of the backer. So he's going to get the backers to kind of come inside, which is sealed. The safety should come down the alley outside, always correcting the linebacker. So we have that extra guy. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to show you my stuff here. So I have some some safety position trainers um, for all 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 facets of my defense. Uh, so I just make sure the coaches and players have these, so they know when I'm telling them to do something or or I'm correcting something using certain key words. Um, I make sure that. Uh, they know what I'm talking about. This is the safety trainer that I made here when I was at Brophy. I was at Brophy when I was a safety coach there. But when we start from everything, the stance, the stance and step. Uh, their first step is a, is a drag step to get a read, which depends on the kids you have. If it, the kid's not very agile, you need to put them in a three-step read, which is the next one. If he can stance and read, drag step and read and, and get out, that's even better. Um, but we teach the, the make the backer right rule, which is right. So that's all the drills we do with the safeties, in case I'm not there. But we do our run reads. Here's our hat, hat, low hat with the uncovered lineman. Um, we were teaching two years ago use the uncovered lineman, but now we teach them to use the tackles. Um, why are we taught them with the uncovered lineman, which is normally the guard, because the guard, you know, the majority of the time takes you to the play. But if you're in a pass set against these high, high powered um, offenses, which we face here in Arizona, like Chandler and Perry and those guys, we need to be able to teach them to tackle. Uh, let me see if I can work these guys. Yeah, I can share my stuff with you guys. So There's no worries. We can share all that stuff with you guys. Let me know. Um, but yeah, quickly, this is just the next drill is make the Sam right, make the buck right, or we call it make the backer right. Um, we have a backer here. They're all reading this this down block. We have a guy down block. He comes up, in or out, and the safety is taking his read steps, and then he's flying up, correcting the backer inside or outside. Um, that's the basic reach for that. Just to make sure we have numbers, if it's like a stretch player, any type of outside zone, you can blow that up. And we just teach everything from, from block destruction to anything like that. But we have it all. Um, here's my cover two rules. And like I said, if they give me time later on, I'll do cover three. But cover two rules are 10 to 12 outside the, outside the on the hash from the coach. Safety is running uh, on the numbers, fade or post routes. Full speed of safety is what we pick up. Safeties must get depth, keeping eyes on quarterbacks from his elbow to his shoulder. In case of a pass and cannot chase wide receivers, both safeties must weave with the shoulder and break on the ball with the hands uh, are, are released and keep while, keep while keeping their, their zones. And I have all my rules with all of my stuff here. And, you know, there's cover two with the, with the corner, how to run cover two drills with the corner, um, and all these different key, keywords. I can share this with you guys. Like I said, I got it all for. Like here's the cornerback one, so you can have an idea of of what we teach with the with the corners. And I just put the logo of the team I'm coaching that that, that day. Uh, here's all the the key words I have for my corners. So when we teach cover two in my next clinic, um, I tend to teach the exit angle, how to do the exit angle, with how to read the hat I hat. Um, you know what we look for: attention to detail, be sound, be prepared. Um, all the stuff that we look for on this defense and what you have to be as a personal requirement to play on the defense that on my defense, especially or our defense, you gotta be physically tough. You gotta be mentally tough and you gotta be emotionally tough. You gotta welcome the challenge. So that's the main thing. And then we just, you know, we break everything down. Everything has to be breaking down because in your program, you want to make sure the frosh coach is teaching the same as the varsity coach. And those kids are ready to get pulled up at any time. So that's what we're doing here. So um, let's see if we have cover two in here. We should. We have all our stuff in here that we want to teach, and you got to make sure that. And what we do is we make the coach, that position coach, write write this coach's trainer, 
and then you grade it to make sure that he's on the same page you are. Um, if he's on the same page, it should look like a replica of what you've got. So here's our coverages. Here's cover three, cover three, cover two. So here's our cloud, you know, depending how we play it. Uh, reroute number one receiver inside protect deep sideline, exit angle number three, response. So exit angle number three, that goes back to this PowerPoint. We don't call it flats, we call it areas. We go back to this area. So we exit angle to our area three, which is our flat. So it all ties into what we teach. Um, eight yards off the ball and tilt stand, of quarterback takes a free snap read, you know, get your cane square off, release vertical, all, all the things we teach against our stuff. So, um, and we have it all for our D line our linebackers, I can definitely share the stuff with you guys as we go along and, um, you know, just keep telling you all the drills to do, all their warm-ups, but then the most important stuff is their, read, their run reads, how to break up, how to block destruction, um, how we teach flow, tight flow, wide flow, fast flow, everything we teach there. Um, but the main thing is if we're reading the guard and he has a down block, you know, we're going to tight flow through, away, through the base block, and get to the back. So um, it's a lot to teach in an hour. But I, I can definitely share with this guys and go with you guys as well. We can wide flow if it's a, it's a reach or down block as well, um, and how to take the correct steps to that. Um, so we have all this stuff that we put in that everybody has to know to play a sound defense. And here's our pass coverage. Um, and cover two linebackers. Uh, should open to the drop first five yards square up back pedal as long as the QB has the ball. Um, they should get a better base move to their zone and cover three. They can play and open up to their landmarks, which is the, which is the hash and cover three. It's, it's the numbers. Landmarks change as as the coverage changes, but in cover three, the, the area two, which is hooked to curl of uh, two flat, is their zone and uh, dropping back and needs to work on getting the needs to work hard to get in their width. So it all ties into what's in the playbook and we use all these cover areas um, to tie into that, how to read it, pass, pass it, all that stuff. So um, like I said, I have it all for you guys. If you guys want it, I can share it with you. I can have the coach share it with you. Um, which way get back to it, you know. We have the, of course, the D-line trainer as well, you know. And, you know, we don't have to run all this stuff. Uh, we just make sure it's there in case we need it, right? What's our football cue? What we expect of everybody? Everything's got a different type of thing. This one has video um, and how we play the, the stances and the past stances and get off and all that. Post snap. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Okay. Yep. Post snap movements. How so? So you're talking about if, like, it's a, if it's like we're rolling to a cover three or we're rolling to like a buzz technique or or it depends. So my safeties, when I teach the safeties, um, post snap is their first step is a three step. Well, it's a drag step, right? We got a question here. Yeah, so if it's cover three, it just depends on what we're doing. So let me go back to my playbook here. So it's like uh, a trips cover three. Uh, he's still taking a three step read backwards to get depth to make sure he's still got to read he's still got alley he's still got to make the sam and sam right so in this case he would make the sam right or the backer right by coming inside leverage right but he's still taking a three-step read once you see hi hat he's going to get to his his landmark which is the top of the numbers that's that's his post set if um his post snap set if it's like a cover three so if he's coming down like he's playing cover cover one against the number three receiver He's going to start at 12, but then he's going to creep as, as the, the cadence goes on. So what I teach them is they're looking at the, the tackle of the quarterback. But, uh, and in film, we're actually reading uh, what does the quarterback do? What does he give away? I know the perfect case, we, we played Spencer Rattler, right? Spencer Rattler, every time he's going to throw the ball, he reached for his towel behind his back, right? And then he would set his hands. And we knew when he set his hands, we would come up, and that's when we would make our, 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 our movements. Um, we like to make them before the snap, not quite after the snap. We like to go before the snap to get in a good place. Um, but we do have post-snap movements, just depending on how the quarterback reacts. Like, let's see, that's, that's my cover three. Let me see if I have a cover, Bobby Bowl, Bobby Baller. So like my buzz. Like instead of doing his pre-snap read, 
the three step read, he'll do a, a, a read step like a linebacker post snap, and then he'll come up and play the buzz technique and take away the area two to three. Um, I don't know if that helps. We just have different types. If it's if it's man to man, it's always pre snap. If it's if it's any type of zone disguise, it's always post snaps. But we're moving as soon as that quarterback sets his hands or that key that we got during film that week that tells us when when we can go. And I also do that with our our blitzes as well. As soon as we know what that quarterback, how that quarterback snaps his hands or claps or whatever the heck he does, touches face Mac, whatever key he gives us, we're that's when we go. I don't know if that helps at all, but that's our Ringo Lucky, which is different than Buzz. We're going inside or out. Just a different area. This is area two, the area three. It's just a different drop. Um, yep, cool. All right. So that's really all I got for you guys on this one. Um, I know when we go, I go in depth and cover two and stuff like that. I do a lot more. I got a lot more film and stuff right now with the read and everything. That's really what I got. I can take any questions that you guys have. Yeah, feel free, uh, guys, to ask any questions to Coach if you have some. And uh, Coach Patterson, we'll definitely uh, get you back on next week to do part two and, and just kind of continue it on for sure. Yeah, definitely. As long as you're good with that. I'm good with that. It's just a lot to fit in. Like, this yeah. is a five-part five part thing and cover two is what I like to play and there's a lot of stuff we can we can we can tag on to that like we can play cover one with a safety and bring well, I'm sorry with a corner and bring a blitz depending on your corner all that stuff did per 21 um let's see I have it right here I call it Ringo Lucky we, we, everything looks the same out of us this guy too far back that's my bad let's fix that Uh, 21, we bring up the end, we put him in a five, we play one, uh, the nose, I'm sorry, a five, three, one, and we play a five technique here, we put the mic in the B gap, and we have the will playing down on the line, smashing down on that tight end, um, he's squared, and I can teach you that when we do that, he's, he's not, he's not playing with his, with his inside foot up, he's playing squared with with the tight end so it's kind of like man the man with the tight end so if that tight end takes an outside reach step he can keep that leverage on the outside if that tight end takes a down step or down block to block the rush he can smash the tight end or not give him a free release to the ball the mic should then once he reads past the mic should be able to read his landmark but his eye should go to number two which is a tight end for anything you know quick right here take that away right away and carry him up the field but we have numbers on this side, as you see, with the safety coming down. We have one, two, three, four, five. There's one, two, three, four, or five, just depending on how you see it. But uh, we'll always have numbers against the rush. And that's how I play that. And you go to do stunts right here and all this stuff, but just depending on down the distance. Um, no, because we want to smash that tight end. Um, we can we can boss we can boss this mic over boss over strong or bump over strong you know we can boss them over put the mic in the a gap and have you know this this sand this strong is actually he's not reading the outside hip with the tackle anymore that's our leg he's actually reading the uncovered lineman in cover three which is another rule that and in, in the safety training you'll see so he's actually coming up and helping here anyways but we can always boss over if if, if that guy moves over or motions over um, we can do that or we can just just banjo it right here with these two. So if, they, if this guy is on this side, we'll boss, we'll bow, bump over weak, or if he's on the left, we'll boss over, we'll boss over strong. You know what, we played, um, when I was coaching at Scottsdale Christian last year, we played Phoenix Christian. They played a double wing, and I see a lot of double wing in, in 2A when I coach down there. Um, don't see much in 6A. You do see teams like Westwood that run it really well, and Desert Ridge, and, but you don't see it that much. You see more of the high powered, you know, running gun type offices in six A. I do have some stuff on there, but uh, I'll send it to you if you want. If you want to send me a message. Any other questions I can answer you guys? Coach, did you uh, did you? Uh, post your, your contact information or how's the best way they can uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll write it here in the chat so you guys can have it. Here's my phone number. And then, um, 
my Twitter is at and my email is at And I invite you guys if you want the, the on Thursdays when I do a, the one in Spanish, it's Spanglish. So you guys can understand most of it and it's football and diagrams. So you guys know that stuff. You want to join in on that one as well. So awesome. Yeah. Hey, make sure make sure you guys uh you know follow coach on Twitter, man. He's obviously he's he's he shared his contact information. So, you know, clearly willing willing to share whatever. Uh, take advantage of that and we'll certainly uh, get him back on next week to do another session, kind of the part two deal, and and uh, we'll continue it on. But uh, for sure, if anybody has any other questions, man, we'll we'll leave the, the chat open for a few minutes if uh, anybody thinks of anything. And also, if you want to share your Twitter handles, you know, we always uh, you know encourage that so we can stay connected.